I'm sure you've heard of Stonehenge in England, but have you heard of Poverty Point in Northeast Louisiana? Like Stonehenge, Poverty Point is unique for many ways, one of them being its size. For example, you could literally fit hundreds of Stonehenges into the footprint of Poverty Point. In addition, the people who built Poverty Point made many earthworks, and while not made of stone, the labor effort required to construct these was far greater than required to build Stonehenge or even dozens of Stonehenges. Take, for example, Mound A at Poverty Point. This is the second largest mound north of the Valley of Mexico. It stands 72 feet tall, and when you look at it from above, it looks a little like a T. It's about 700 feet north to south and a little longer east to west. It would have required about 238,500 cubic meters of soil to build this, and to put that in context, that's 31,217 standard dump truck loads of dirt, and this was all built by hand. But perhaps more remarkably, Poverty Point was built by hunters and gatherers between 1500 and 1200 BCE. For centuries, hunters and gatherers have been upheld as the original state of human society. For example, they're marked by simplicity, small group size, mobility, the lack of leadership, and political equality or egalitarianism. And if hunters and gatherers were simple and highly mobile with no leadership, we'd expect it would take a long time to build Mound A, perhaps hundreds of years as people return to the site periodically. Our excavations at Mound A, however, show exactly the opposite. Rather than hundreds of years, it took between 30 and 90 days to build Mound A. And this required a remarkable labor effort by over a thousand laborers working full time, plus a large supporting population. How do we know Mound A was built quickly? Well, if it had taken a long time to build, we'd expect there to be many layers in the soil, a little bit like a birthday cake. In addition, during pauses in construction, we'd expect there to be weathering of the exposed surfaces. Trees would grow or erosion would happen from rain. Insects or earthworms might burrow into the exposed surface of the mound. But we found no evidence of that. We find no layers, we find no erosion, we find no vegetation growing or insect burrowing of any sort whatsoever. Once they built Mound A, we think that they used it as a temple or a place of worship because they didn't build any structures on the surface or on its summit, and there's no garbage around the mound to suggest anyone was living there. These findings are really remarkable because they show us that the people who lived at Poverty Point were far more complex than previously thought. They were, had a much larger population and they had a kind of leadership organization that was much stronger and that was capable of organizing this remarkable labor effort. In addition, they had a very sophisticated religion which isn't characteristic of hunters and gatherers. So are hunters and gatherers the original state of human society before civilization? Certainly not. Rather than seeing them as some unique state of human society, our work at Poverty Point suggests, in fact, that hunter-gatherer uh, social organization, uh, economy, religion, politics, and worldview are remarkably intricate. And this insight forces us to confront the fact that human nature is complex and has been for a long time, and that history, unlike the way the textbooks often portray it, isn't the simple march from simple to complex or from savage to civilization. In fact, if hunter-gatherers had a Facebook status, it would be, it's complicated. You can see this man running for three kilometers from Kumaran with a scroll that described his dream, his temple. The Romans were coming. 